Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this morning on the third day of Elul, is it the third? Yeah. Um, I thought I would share some of what I've been learning about um, the way some of the Hasidic teachers from uh, Central and Eastern Europe uh, have been wrote about and thought about Elul and also uh, wanting to the fifth day of Elul. Thank you. And also see if I can connect it a little bit to this week's Parsha, which is Shoftim um, judges. Uh, so because we've been beginning uh, each of these sessions with a song uh, of, from Psalm 27, I thought I would begin by reading uh, Norman Fisher's um, interpretation, interpretive translation of Psalm 27. You are my light and my help. Whom should I fear? You are the fortress of my life. Whom should I dread? When the narrow ones gather their strength to devour me, it is they who stumble and fall. Even if a royal army were camped outside my gate, my heart would not fear. And when they struck out with terrible weapons against me, even then I'd trust. One thing I ask for, one thing I hope, to live in your house all the days of my life, to behold your loveliness every morning in the light of your temple dawn. It goes on, that's just the part I wanna read because the way he's put the words of the Psalm uh, through, the way they've come through to him um, really says to me how the, the Hasidic masters, as we call them, looked at uh, Elul and, and what's happening in this month. Um, so, and I'm thinking specifically that in the month of Elul, which is the month preceding Rosh Hashanah, right? It's uh, in this month, uh, it has been said for, for uh, centuries in the Jewish tradition that uh, what we think of as God, uh, what we think of as, as our God, uh, our individual, our personal God, our collective God, has come out into the field and has given us access, access to this field. So we have the opportunity to go out of our gates, however we think of our gates, right? Whether it's the gates of our city, the gates of our town, and, and, uh, or the gates of our heart, or the gates of our minds, that, that, that when we can go out, we have the opportunity to rest and encounter and, and experience the love of this uh, all-encompassing uh, divine energy. And um, I love what Rabbi Jonathan Kligler, how he thinks of it as uh, life unfolding, that this is uh, the time when all of us, everyone has access to reconnect intimately with life as it is unfolding. And uh, as a, a student of, of Buddhism, the first thing that comes to this mind about what it means to have this opportunity to encounter life unfolding, it's to encounter life without the, the judgments, the concepts, the thoughts, the evaluations that arise in my mind about what I'm encountering. So in other words, it's the, the intimacy. And I learned a lot of this from Norman Fisher, who's a Jewish Zen teacher. Um, that, that uh, the word nirvana itself means blowing out of concepts. So it's, this is the month when we actually have the opportunity 
to come out of the gates of our mind, which are the gates of our stories and our narratives and the continual chatter of evaluation of what's happening and what does that mean and, and thoughts about each other, we come out of that to just encounter in this field, this uh, intimate um, connection to life as it's unfolding. So that is the invitation. And when you think about it, we think of uh, Rosh Hashanah, right? Which is at the end of the month of Elul, the first of Tishrei, uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we think of those as times when uh, the ancient priests had access, right? Who is it that goes into the Holy of Holies in the inner sanctum of the temple? And in fact, in, in the service, right? This is the service when we all bow down, we prostrate on the, prostrate on, on the floor um, because we are experiencing what the uh, high priests in the ancient religion experienced, this intimate encounter. Well, that's in the inner, inner sanction of some temple building is traditionally how the rabbis thought of it, the rabbis before the Hasidic rabbis, right? But what's happening in Elul is we're like the Mayans. We're encountering this in the field, freely accessible. And I think of Hasidut, which is the ancestral mystical uh, thread tradition of, of my ancestors and maybe of most of us at the Woodstock Jewish congregation, um, that, that, that this is a time when we're like, no, 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 we're free from this uh, you know, ritual that only is accessible to these high priests, that Elul is the month when it's accessible, accessible to all of us. And that's what it says in the Psalm, uh, that I want to live in your house all the days of my life to behold your loveliness every morning in the light of your temple dawn. So I am opening in this time of Elul to seeing the majesty, the total majesty of, of the creator uh, of the uh, life itself in the dawn, right? Which of course we, we can do this every day. However, there's something special about Elul. And uh, so I was really delighted to discover in a class that I'm taking uh, with Rabbi David Ingber, uh, what the, the Hasidic uh, teachers say about the special quality of uh, Elul. And uh, so this, this one uh, Hasidic mystic called the, uh, who, whose book was the B'nai Yisachar, Yisachar, um, he wrote that, uh, so, so here's this, this Hasidic guy living in, uh, Hungary, actually. Um, he was very into astrology as in the Hellenistic Greek astrology that, that we know. So in his writing about Elul, he starts out by saying that, uh, by reminding us, or maybe he was telling uh, people in his little shtetl in Eastern Europe, and maybe they didn't know that the month of Elul begins with the rising of the new moon, the dark moon of Virgo. And he immediately, uh, so in, in the minds of these um, Hasids, the month of Elul is connected to the energy of, of Virgo, which uh, kind of blew my mind. Um, and this is a Rabbi Tzvi Elimelech of Dinov. Um, and he was uh, connected to the Polish Hungarian, one of the Polish Hungarian Hasidic dynasties. And what he wrote he said that it's been known since the third century, right? So he's writing in the 1700s that uh, the moon of Elul, uh, the constellations, the mazal, the, 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 uh, the constellations, uh, the alignment of the cosmos in Elul 
is associated with the virgin. And he's talking about Virgo. And he talks, he then traces this. So this is what the Hasids do with this. He says that um, the, the expression uh, for this association with the Virgin, this alignment of the moon of Elul with the Virgin has the same gematria as uh, the expression from uh, another Psalm that uh, the mother of the children is joyous. The mother of the child is full of joy when the child returns. So what the has, what this particular Hasidic school makes of this is that when we go out into the field in Elul, what, what we are encountering is the, the mother energy of yud heh vav -Hey. And uh, it's all connected with the different spherot from uh, the energies or uh, emanations with which uh, in Kabbalah, um, with which the creator energy uh, created the world, uh, that what's the one that's associated, the energy that's associated with the joy of the mother whose children have returned to her is the uh, quality of Bina. The notion of return is known as Bina. This is the, the, the teaching from this Hasidic master. And Bina is associated with the mother. So what they make of this is that Teshuvah, which is the, the predominant practice that we're doing in Elul, right? Returning, returning to our true nature, returning to our unity, returning to our creator, returning to an unending love is returning to the womb. That the first step of Teshuvah is to reattach ourselves to the nourishment of the primordial Ima, the primordial mother, and that that is called Bina. And that to be in the field where we can do the work, we think of this month as a month of doing work also, right? To be uh, capable of, of doing this work of returning, reconnecting to ourselves, parts of ourselves that we've exiled, reconnecting to other people, approaching people, being open to people approaching us, which is the, the work of Elul, we have to begin by reconnecting to uh, the source that feeds us, that nourishes us. That's the association with the womb, right? This unending, unconditional nourishment and love. And that so that we can uh, enter into the field, uh, the first thing we want to do is visualize this field as this field of, of oneness where we can behold in the temple dawn, right? We can behold the dawn, we can behold the beauty, the transcendence of, of life, fill ourselves up with that. And then we can go out and do whatever work we wanna do this month. And I think in modern terms, we know that uh, the more we can uh, have a secure attachment to this source of continuing nourishment and safety, right? The more we can then go out into a field and encounter a safe world. So this is the kind of freedom that the Hasids uh, in this particular school are advocating for Elul first to, to find your own connection, uh, find what really nourishes you and learn how to fill yourself up. And I think of this as with your own self-forgiveness, begin with self-forgiveness, right? And then to go out to other people so that we're doing it, we're going out to do our work of Teshuvah this month, we're, we're really going out from a place of nourishment, not depletion. And um, this is what can write us back 
into the book of life, right? that we find that unitary nourishment in the field, thinking of the field as the mother womb. And then from that place, we can start to approach each other and ourselves and ask for forgiveness and extend forgiveness. So I want to really bless us to trust that beginning our, our teshuva work in this month, that we begin it by nourishing ourselves and by finding that connection in the field to what nourishes and fills us so that when we go out, we really are doing it from uh, a place where we're, we're sustained. So, thank you. All right, um, thank you. We'll blow the shofar. And um, so let me switch. And I'll put some of the uh, sites in the chat. Good. Maybe after we blow the shofar. Maybe yeah. it's, I need to learn how to find on the website. The, maybe it's- Joan, the, Joan, Joan, we're gonna blow the shofar and then we can talk about it. Here. Okay? All right, so stand if it's your custom to stand. <laughs> 